Good morning. No, I'm not on a bike. That's because my two bikes, one is mine, one is BH's, neither of them were working. The BH because the DI2 battery ran out and they hadn't sent me a charger. And so I got the gain on the go again. And uh, great as it was, it started making a really horrible noise. And I got back thinking, I now don't have a bike. Because I didn't want to ride the game while it was making such a horrible noise. Because I didn't know what it was and I didn't want it to be something terminal. Um, anyway, I got back from that ride to find um, the guy from BH, the delivery man from BH at the door, less than 24 hours later with a charger. I mean, that just doesn't happen in Spain. The quickest you can get a delivery is blah, three or four days if they're really shifting. And so I wasn't expecting to have the BH back. Um, but... Yeah, there he was, plugged it in. Hour later, I'm back on the road. So that, let's show you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Yes, they are butternut squash in the background. This is our um, this is our do-it-all room. It used to be the dairy when we did a lot of um, uh, cheese making with our goats. Um, but now we've only got two goats left and we just make enough cheese and uh, milk for our own purposes so we don't really need to keep it quite as pristine which means I can now keep bikes in here which is handy so I've got my game and I've got the BH and butternut squash but today before we can go for a ride I need to fix this noise now I've asked some uh, friends and colleagues about what they think it could be and they came up with a point that it could be a link in the chain because it seems to be related to the pedaling, not the wheel rotation. Um, anyway, the chain has now been off and completely cleaned and re-lubed. I haven't tested it yet because I'm, I'm actually, sorry guys, but I'm not convinced it's that. I think it's just as likely to be one of two other things. One is that I've just remade the rear wheel, so it could well be something to do with the rear wheel. And the other thing I changed, just so I could go for a quick ride, was I uh, put on my old SPD SL pedals. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take those off and grease them and put them back on and then go for a ride and see if we've cured it. So I did think while I'm doing this, I can have a bit of a chat with you or I can talk about actually how I'm, what I'm doing. So I'm just gonna take the pedals off and um, put a bit of anti-seize grease on them. Um, I've always used that. Other people might say you shouldn't, but I always have, but I didn't this time. I was in such a rush to go out that I just wanted to go. So I quickly put on my old SPD SL pedals because I've got my SPD pedals on the BH. Uh, yeah, anyway, we'll get on with this and I can be talking at the same time. Um, oh, wrong way. Oh yes, pedals, you know this already. When you tighten both, if you're looking at the bike facing that way, it's down to tighten, up to release. For both pedals if you put the pedal to the front it's this if you like it's opposite ways but it's the same way if you're looking at it from one side so from this side oh hello how did that happen um it's it's that way oops i don't know if i'm getting in this it's a new angle for me usually on a bike aren't i anyway anti-seize grease it's this um Copper, copper grease. There we go, copper grease. And I just put, and I shouldn't use my finger. I always have done that as well. I'm just wiping a bit around, wiping a bit around the thread. Make sure it's all the way around. And so it's forwards from this side, clockwise. Titan. Anyway, tighten it up. You don't have to put tons and tons of pressure on because as you pedal it tightens. And so for the other side it's the same. Hope you can see. To undo you're going to want to go backwards. Both this pedal, it's that way, 
that way from this side it's that way as well um, also if you have a bit of a struggle like me because I'm on the wrong side of doing things if you put the if you put the allen key in why isn't it going in it is going in if you put the allen key in so it's just above the pedal you can grab hold of the two together and squeeze and it undoes that's how I do it And we'll just do the same with that one. I just work it into the threads. That way I know that if the creek is coming from here, there's now grease where it might have been metal on metal. I'll get my fingers a little clean that time. Got too much on there. I'm not the cleanest of workers. Some people are fastidious. I just like kind of want to get it done because I prefer to be riding. Fettling with bikes is nice, but not on a beautiful day, and it's a glorious, glorious day here, so... Doesn't have to be too much. So that's the pedals greased. Now from what I've read, the rear wheel, if that's at fault of making creaks, it can either come from where the spoke nipples enter the rim, or it can come from where the uh, spokes cross. Either of those can cause the noise that I've got. Now, I didn't, and I should have done, I didn't lubricate either of those when I made this wheel. So it is quite a likely um, problem area. So what I'm gonna do is lube both before carrying on with a ride. And what I'm gonna use for that is some um, chain oil, because it doesn't tend to fly off at high speeds, because that's what it's designed for. So that's what I'm thinking will be the best thing for here. It's a dry oil. I don't know what that means really, it always looks fairly wet to me, but I'm just going to put, and hopefully you're going to get this, a tiny drop, a tiny drop in each spoke nipple hole, and then I'll clean it up afterwards, and I'm just hoping that if I put it on this top side, as I put the wheel up this way, it will roll down into the hole. So I did ask some friends as to what the noise could be and they came up with one thing and then I looked it up online and there must have been 25 other possible causes of this noise all listed and I thought I'm going to have to try all of these aren't I because I better don't get it first time. That's that done. Now I'd probably be wise to leave that to sort of penetrate a little. So I'm just going to check those uh, bolts now and it was only when I got down on the floor to have a look that I noticed that they're star drives rather than an allen key. I don't know why you'd put star drive bolts on a bike which is almost entirely put together with allen, allen keys but there you go. Fortunately I do have one of the correct size but it's Hmm, I would say that's bordering on naughty. Bear with me, I can't do this with one hand. So I'm just gonna let's check it is tight. That one is. Oh, anyway, they're all tight, so hopefully it's not that. Shouldn't be, just checked them. And you may be wondering why I'm bothering with the gain at all at the moment when I've got that beautiful BH to ride and it's because this afternoon I need to go to Mountain Man Dave who's going to bleed the brakes of my gain which are very squishy and I thought I was done fettling but I'm not I've bought a, a recent purchase they're not new but um, I'm planning to do some really long distance rides this year I've got quite a few planned not least my coast to coast. It's got to happen sometime. Um, but what I'm finding is I'm becoming increasingly uncomfortable on the bike. And that's because I've recently found out I've got um, osteoarthritis absolutely everywhere. Um, quite bad. Um, and that showed up when they're trying to find what's wrong with my heart. And as a byproduct of the tests, they found I've got really bad osteoarthritis in, uh, well, like I say, it's everywhere. It's in my neck, in my back in my wrists, my hands, my knees, my hips, my pelvis, 
uh, ankles, feet, but my elbows are fine. Anyway, it's my elbows I'm thinking about because I've bought some aero bars just for a change of position when I'm riding the bike long distances. Um, not to be stealthy or aero or to go faster, literally, so I've got a way of taking the pressure off my hands because I do suffer from carpal tunnel syndrome as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to pop these on for the trip over to Dave's just to see how they go. Well, unfortunately, none of that has worked. <laughs> so I'm on the road anyway to go and see Matt and Dave about bleeding my brakes. We'll have to put our uh, heads together to see what it can be. I can actually probably hear it occasionally. Um, I can feel it through the pedals. So it has to be something down there, doesn't it? Don't want it to be the bottom bracket. It's quite a loud clunk, clank, crack noise. It's quite unpleasant. Anyway, we'll see Mountain Man, man blah, blah, blah. we'll see Mountain Man about getting our brakes done. And then we'll try again with this. Is he going to see me? He did. Just grabbing him on video in case he was naughty, he was a sw swing out and crash into me. This is Ginnastar. It was once populated by lots and lots and lots, hundreds in fact, of Brits. It's one of their favourite places to come and set up shop. Not literally, I mean come and live. And it's because the, uh, the mayor of the town at the time was corrupt and he would sell them permissions to uh, build their houses out in the country. And uh, they were illegal. Some of them got torn down, some of them were allowed to stay. Eventually he went to prison. Now, sadly, the mountain man lives at the top of this hill. It's only short, but it's absolutely murderous. I'll tell you later, once I get to the top, just how steep it is. But it's, oh, it's really nasty. And you always get to him blown and red of face, sweaty. It's really horrible. Well, that was a fantastically successful trip. Dave wasn't so keen on being filmed, fair enough. Um, but we did the bleeding of the brakes. But um, we found the clonk. And it was, uh, it was the axle and a nut on the axle. Very weird. Would never have found it unless I happened to have the wheel off and was looking at something else. And we were only just trying to put the nut back on to put the, uh, the wheel back on. We thought, that's a bit funny. And we had a look. And it was all out of alignment sort of thing and like I say I'll tell you exactly later in case you're an Obeya gain rider but this is something that could happen to any of us and um, it's, it's a dead easy fix so there's no clonk and I'm very happy and I'm about to go down a very very steep hill one-handed so I'm gonna put you away for a second well that was fantastic the bike's gone better than it's gone in months so I'm very happy I find I'm just gonna have to describe it to you so you've got the lock nut on the outside just to lock the whole wheel into place Obviously take that off, drop the wheel out, you'll need to take the cassette off and as the axle goes all the way through the motor, or it's on either side of the motor, I'm not entirely sure, there's, um, there's a lock nut, it's about there. And on the other side there's an equivalent lock nut and you need to basically hang on to one and the one on this side had undone. And it was as simple as that, I just tightened it up by holding the other one, tightened that one and Job done. I am sorry, it's been a bit of a funny one this week. Um, I was up without a bike for a little while, um, so I do apologize for that. Should be back to normal next week. Um, it probably, actually, it'll be back to normal sooner than a week, because I'm hoping to do uh, an iconic climb on the BH while I have it. Um, so look out for that one. I'm not too sure when it's gonna be, but apologies for this week, and thanks for watching.